Change my mind versus we were change here. Change the subject. Change the subject. Ooh, here we go. Change my mind. Bringing in the Shadow Priest Frost Mage Restoration Druid. It's a really good wizard setup. Uh, we were here. I don't feel like this is the worst matchup for them. Windwalker Death Knight can definitely go toe to toe with this comp, especially with that Mistweaver Monk and single target healing that it does provide. Unfortunately for the Mystery Monk, very susceptible to crowd control. So if Pride Kitty can push in and get that crowd control, they can definitely get a lot of pressure. All right, we see crowd control secured on Galwan within these initial seconds, but Valet gets interrupted and bursted. Tons of pressure, manages to stabilize maybe for now. Continues the crowd control chain at least at three on one towards Suniki. He's gonna trade Diffuse Magic to try and help out this incoming magic damage, but didn't benefit from re removing a Maledix healing absorb, and now has to commit even more defensive lineups. Galon as well, but maybe they just get a kill. They might not even care about defense. They land the perfect interrupt, the perfect moment. They take it. We were here have certainly arrived. He changed as to which comp to bring. Doesn't necessarily line up with the map that we are going to see here in game number two, but maybe we are in store for a surprise. Game two, here we come. We are here. We were here versus Change My Mind. Yeah, this is how I kind of look at this matchup. If Sunaki, Mayline, and Galoon could play really aggressive on Fried Kitty, Minpoike is going to have to Cyclone to keep him alive. And if he Cyclones, he's going to be burning through his mana very quick. And then it's only a matter of time before we were here can close out the game. Fried Kitty wants to get aggressive very early on, pulling the Icy Veins. We'll have to see what he can get done. Sunaki immediately trading out the Touch of Karma once again. I like that he's completely willing to just trade out his defenses early on and try to get really aggressive. Yeah, redirecting that damage to Fried Kitty. Minpoike timed his Innervate, though. This is important as Restoration Druid since that mana changes to use Innervate as soon as possible and as frequently as possible to maximize your healing efficiency throughout the fight. Gowan, though, getting aggressive here. Tons of damage. Ice block forced early on here by We Were Here, and they're looking to stay there. Yep, <laughs> they definitely are. <laughs> Fried Kitty trying to kite away using the ice snow to keep Mayline and Sunaki in place. Full Cyclone now on Gloom and Poike pushing in, looking to get aggressive. Acro looks like wants to get onto Mayline as his main target. Galoon, all he has to do is get some soothing mist on Mayline. He should be completely fine. Fried Kitty activating the Temporal Shield. Already a block behind, not activating his Cold Snap. And I think this could be a little bit of a mistake. You want to get that Cold Snap cooldown going as quickly as possible. Finally, he does use it, but lost about 30 seconds on that. And that's going to be his third ice block that gets delayed. All right, Fried Kitty, bit, bit of chokes here in game number two. and. If he ends up losing the series and knocked out of the tournament early on by a three-man roster, basically a one-trick team, that's going to be devastating for the team of Change My Mind as we expect them to go the distance. This is a roster that we could see at the Spring Finals, and they're getting toyed with by we were here. Just We're playing Windwalker Death Knight. We're going to do some damage and try and get a kill with some cheeky plays and managing to take games off of Minpoike and maybe the whole series. Momentum in favor. Some crowd control secured, but it's Fried Kitty on the back foot. Minpoike crowd controls the enemy healer, but it's Minpoike that has to use the defensive cooldown. We were here are dominating. Yeah, Fried Kitty just cannot get the damage rolling. Minpoike's mana is running out quite quickly as well. Already around 60%, but here it is. Minpoike sitting down for a drink. Sunaki gets him. He finds him, nails him. And unfortunately, Minpoike, he's not going to be able to get any mana back. And Gloon still secures that heavy mana. Uh, Minpoike actually just uh, stayed yeah. over there. <laughs> Gallon actually denies it at least with an, an actual lead. It does seem to be that Mistweaver can outman a Druid if you deny the Druid from drinking. Sunaki on the back foot, taking huge damage. Under fire, Mayline is going to protect him, but Suniki doesn't seem to care about defense. He's all about getting in the face of Fried Kitty as soon as possible. Usually you would stay in that defense, try it a little bit longer, but he wants to get an ice block here. Multiple Maledicts soaking up Minpoike's healing. Iron Bark stabilizing him, but maybe not enough. They've got way of the crane. I'm actually almost surprised that they didn't go for it there to force the second ice block. Another Cyclone timed by Minpoike, but that cost him a lot of mana. He's going to have to find drinks and regenerate mana. He snuck away out of line of sight. Mayline is moving forward. Gets Ice Nova just out around the corner. Minpoike is able to regenerate mana because of that Ice Nova timing. Great play by Fried Kitty. It's definitely good, but I don't think they need the mana advantage to actually win this game. Fried Kitty could eventually fall. Ice Block gets such a long cooldown with the Cold Snap. Water Elemental gets killed off. Fried Kitty looking for another one. Good pressure here on Fried Kitty. And if you notice, Fried Kitty is actually playing the Dark Iron Dwarf. He used the Fire Blood Racial to remove one of those Gladiator Maldicks that was soaking up a lot of Infoike's heals. So I think it's a good race for him to choose. Definitely gives him a nice little edge in this matchup to keep himself alive. 
All right, Minpoike is locked in crowd control. Galoon as well as both teams race at each other. I would like to see a swap to Mayline deeper and dampening, but they're kind of pulling the trigger on that swap a bit prematurely, and still lots of damage available for Fried Kitty. He's pinned down. He just can't escape to safety. Galoon is charging forward on top of him as well. I'm surprised they don't go for a way of the crane. Minpoike has no Gladiator's Medallion. They could combo it together to force this second ice block. Temporal Shield timed prematurely by Fried Kitty. During a kidney shot, bit of a misplay there. You would normally want to time that when both melee are able to attack you. Now he's not going to have that defense. But in the meantime, Minpoike has gotten crowd control onto Gallon. Suniki's locked out of the match as well by Fried Kitty. It's three on one. Lots of damage. Black Platoon, though, denies the kill as Mayline continues marching forward. Maybe not enough. We do see Way of the Crane activated for this push for the second ice block. They need to get a second ice block with this crowd control chain, but Minpoike was standing in death and decay, so the paralysis ended up breaking to the damage of that spell. Bit unfortunate here for we were here because they were going to easily get a second ice block with that push. Maybe still have the damage to do it. Yeah, Fried Kitty using the Temporal Shield to absorb some of this damage. Tuniki once again just trading out the Fortifying Brew. Wants to use all of those defensive cooldowns offensively so we can stand the fight, never have to run away, keep up the pressure on Fried Kitty, prevent him from really getting too much out. But now Tuniki potentially getting punished here, preemptively using the Diffuse Magic on the Kidney Shot. Nicely done. Another touch of Karma is there for Tuniki, and that's one of the advantages for the Windwalk. Your defensive cooldown is such a short cooldown. Touch of Death gets used on Fried Kitty, forcing him into the second ice. Block. These aggressive plays by Suniki are pulling major defensive cooldowns and running. Change my mind for a loop. Preemptive life cocoon on Galoon. He's trying to sit through blind. If he can sit through blind, that's the biggest threat on the team for change my mind. And he can comfortably sit through it because he activated the shield protecting Suniki one second before it hit him. Nice read on Galoon. That's going to allow him to hold that Glare's Medallion maybe for a push later on. But Minpoike, in the meantime, was able to sneak away. And this is the advantage of Tolveron Arena. He can just go so far away from the fight, go into Prowl, drink while invisible to his opponents, and get full mana reset. But Galoon, at the same time, is regenerating quite a bit here. We see the grip into the double leg sweep as Suniki tries to lead the charge. Fried Kitty, good evasive maneuvers here, ducking around the corners and avoiding the reconnect during that assault. But he had to use his Glider's Medallion to get out of that leg sweep, which he will not have available. Luckily, his cold snap just came off cooldown, so he's going to have another ice block to blow through moving into dampening. Yep, Suniki moving forward. Lance the incapacitate on him and Poike. Good pressure on Fried Kitty. Does have that third ice block as well as the icy veins. But Suniki, although he's been trading out his defensives, they've all rotated back up. Touch of Karma available. Fortifying Brew available. Diffuse Magic as well. They interrupt on Galoon. Suniki responds with the Fortifying Brew. Doesn't want to go down before Galoon gets out of the crowd control and managing to find the life cocoon on Sunikai as he goes into that full kidney shot. Now Sunikai and Mayline looking to find some damage on Fried Kitty once again. This is the Icy Veins. If they can survive this, it's going to be good. Uh -oh. Fried Kitty forced to play defensive. Incapacitate Amon Poike once again. He manages to find the Iron Bar but still Fried Kitty in a lot of trouble. I'm surprised to not see Touch of Karma traded here by Suniki to redirect all this incoming Frost Mage damage. Now, locked down in a kidney shot. Fried Kitty looking for Polymorphs, but Galoon gets counterspelled. This is devastating for We Were Here. They had all the momentum throughout this entire match, but they're now falling behind to the pressure of Fried Kitty's Icy Veins. Touch of Death about to go off. Minpoike's crowd controlled. He's trying to hold on to it with that Temporal, but it might be a risk he can't take. Ice Block gets traded, denies the kill, but he is unlikely to get another Ice Block. That immunity defense that he's currently sitting through will not be available. The next big threat, the next big push could push Change My Mind to their limit and we were here may advance and put them on match points this is supposed to be the tournament for Minpoike's redemption his chance to prove he still got it but we were here are looking to deny it Yet new kids on the block Sunakai he's going to be porting out a line of sight Galoon into the full blind is he going to have to use his trinket Sunakai actually wasting his leg sweep there trying to pull Acro out of stealth but unfortunately Acro dodged it now Sunakai could be a little bit vulnerable and loses that offense of that stun it's a really long cooldown so that's unfortunate for Sunakai Galoon looking to get some heals onto Sunakai as he it does get lower smoke bomb gets dropped nice cyclone coming in from Minpoike they can find any CC on Galoon it could be his trinket asphyxiate stun onto Minpoike Poike 
Good job by Mayline trying to slow down this crowd control. Galoon now into a full polymorph on his way of the crane. Zunikai has to pull out of line of sight using the Fist of Fury to parry Acro. And now able to cast some Vivify, should be able to survive. And now with his Touch of Karma, with his Diffuse Magic, he's going to be feel very that, good to push in and try to take down that, Cloud Kitty. That way of the crane was wasted. He got completely controlled on it. I was hoping Galoon would use his Gladiator's Medallion to get out of crowd control during way of the crane, add extra damage to his team, and just kill Fried Kitty. But he didn't go for it. Now instead, he's heavily behind on mana. He's got a couple opportunities to do it again, but they're going to have to, I think, to find enough damage. Oh. Suniki falls behind to huge burst here by Fried Kitty, but Touch of Karma now redirects the damage. This might be it for Fried Kitty. They're moving to put them on match points. Then Point is locked down in crowd control, and the damage just isn't stopping. There's really not much left. He manages to blink back, and then Point Game repositions over to him to connect some regrowth. All of this mana regeneration from drinking was very important for Minpoike to drag this fight out as long as he possibly could to have the lead. It's up to Gallon. He's going to have to make a risky play with this way of the crane. Maybe not. Maledix absorbs a heal. Do they have another Maledix? They do. This is trouble for Fried Kitty. Gallon, I would just love to see the way of the crane pop it now. Kill him. He's got no health left. Why is he not just going for it? Fried Kitty would not be able to survive through these attacks if way of the crane was connecting as well. Yeah, really greedy plays there by Galoon, and he not using those offensive cooldowns. I think Fried Kitty could have gone down, but now with no Iron Bark, Fried Kitty no shrink it. Galoon pushing in, trying to put the final nail in the coffin. Even Mayline helping out his team by dropping the anti-magic zone. Fried Kitty gets gripped back in. Can he escape? Sunkai, Mayline, Gallon looking to close up the game as all three members on top of Fried Kitty, and they claim game number two. Changed my mind on match point. We were here on a bit of a roll. Series of the day, we were here to make it the last game of the day. And I got one last question for all of you in the chat. Where are you guys right now? They're here, obviously. That was just like we are. That was a good follow up. So, Mayline in this matchup, he's actually playing Dark Simulacrum. So, watch out for that in this matchup. He's going to be looking to steal spells, vital spells like Polymorph and Fear. If he can take those, he can swing crowd control and pressure in favor of his own team. All right, at this point, Gallon has been locked down crowd control, but Suniki has been making these plays. Touch of Karma is to reverse pressure while Mayline stole crowd control from the opposing team, and Dark Simulacron could be the honor talent that they need to put this match over the edge. It may be something that changed my mind. We're not expecting. There's a lot of pressure as Valet is starting to falter. He can't afford to throw. He's on match point, and he's dangerously low. And Poike max range, mashing out as many incoming heals as he can. No Dark Simulacron usage just yet onto these Polymorphs, onto Galoon, but the damage is just huge! Yeah, Valet forced into the dispersion, luckily was able to get it off in this game, and Poike though, already trading out his Iron Bark as well as his Trinket, so not too many defensives left. Valet still has his most important defensive though, that Void Shift at any point in the game. He can trade his health and exchange it for someone else's. It pairs really well with a Mage, especially if he's running the Temporal Shield. The Mage can use the Temporal Shield, Void Shift will hit him, and then both of them will end up going to full HP as the Mage will regenerate his health via Temporal Shield. So it's a strong combo the Shadow Priest Mage does have in this matchup. Then Poike, is he sitting down for a drink already? So yeah, really doesn't want to fall behind on mana. I think it's an intelligent decision. Tsunake now in midfield on Valet. Valet going to be taking a lot of damage at this point. Silence on the Galoon, Polymorph on Mayline. Tsunake seems to be the target of choice. He doesn't have any defensives. He has to run away. Finally dropping his port in a good defensive position, and that's going to be vital for him staying alive. I don't know why I changed my mind. Didn't go with his composition in game two. Tsunuki on the run here as his healer is locked out of the match for an extended period of time and unable to heal. Once again, touch of karma right before an incoming stun. Tsunuki is inside. The minds have changed my mind and predicting tons of damage and denying it entirely. Now at this point, though, he may need to get defensive. Maybe not. Let's just target the Shadow Priest and just put him down here as they are on match point and they're getting aggressive. Minpoike denies the kill with both Iron Bark and Thorns. Valet is now a tanky threat that we were here is just defiantly continuing to attack. Yes, Sunakai trades out basically all his defensives in order to keep the aggression on Valet. Full polymorph on the Galoon right now. Nice crowd control from Fried Kitty. Icy Veins coming up in around 35 seconds. Sunakai, he has to be very careful for that. He just uses Transcendence, poured it away. But if he gets caught in midfield once again, it's going to be difficult for him to escape that Frost Mage. So definitely has to play it safe in a moment when Fry Ooh. Kitty does have Icy Veins available. And Poike actually playing Feral Affinity, and he just showed that he was playing that 
I would like to see them maybe run down Minpoike, a Feral Affinity Restoration Druid. That sounds tasty for Windwalker Death Knight combined together, although a risky exchange because then leaving a mage in the Shadow Priest open could just tear you apart. They've, they're on match point, though. They've got so much leeway to play with. I actually think that they should take that risk, try and run Minpoike down. They've got a huge mana lead in this position. Their cooldowns are rotating back up, except right now if they don't survive for the next five seconds, which would be a little bit unfortunate. Four seconds, three seconds. Gowland denies the kill. Mayline manages to steal a polymorph from Fried Kitty, but not able to really capitalize on it because Suniki is just forced to run. Yeah, once again, out of line of sight, n opting not to trade out his Tetra Karma in that situation, which is a play I feel like we'd normally see him make, just trading his defensives for sheer aggression, but wants to play it a little bit more defensive, especially with Galoon having no trinket and no life cocoon. He doesn't have those abilities to fall back onto as a, in a, as a safety net. Then Poike now caught into the leg sweep. Valet, a lot of pressure onto him. If he gets interrupted, he could be in some trouble. Thorn's going to be used by Minpoike, and if you don't know what Thorn's does, it's a buff you can put on your teammate, so onto Valet, and that's going to be redirecting a lot of this melee damage onto Mayline and Sunakai, so they have to sort of think twice about just training Valet down. All right, Dark Simulacrom available for Mayline. Fried Kitty needs to be aware of that. If he gives a Polymorph to the Death Knight, it might be the end of Valet if he's not careful. I still think they should switch targets to Minpoiki at some point in this fight with that Feral Affinity. You are a good target to attack as a Druid. Let's see what they decide to do here. Mayline is marching to deny Minpoike's drink, but I believe he got some of it regardless, which is now going to put the mana fight basically equal as we etch closer to dampening. Suniki again, retreating back behind the pillar, waiting for vital defensive cooldowns before making a push, which is very important as a double melee composition. When you don't have defensive cooldowns, look to retreat away, wait for them to refresh when they're available, then go for a big push as you have a safety net to fall back on. That Galoon is actually on top of Minpoike now. It looks like a split strategy is being implemented by We Were Here, trying to burn some of the mana that Minpoike has available. It's at around 60%, and if they can keep up the pressure on Fried Kitty, as well as Valet, Minpoike is going to have to keep those heal over time effects on multiple targets. Right now, Galoon and Sunakai, they're in a pretty safe spot. They can just pour it all away, out of line of sight. Mayline, he can basically play offense for their team as he is so tanky before dampening does kick in but later on that's going to be the advantage change my mind has mayline he's not going to be as tanky he's not going to be able to heal himself up for quite as much and when sunakai and gloom they're running out of line of sight they're hiding for their lives mayline's going to get swapped to and he can get deleted out of the arena yeah deep in dampening mayline is going to be a point of contention for change my mind fried kitty predicts this attack Activates Temporal Shield right before taking a ton of damage, which is now healing him back. But the Maledict soaked up a lot of that healing. Suniki is low as well, but he got Touch of Karma off right before an incoming bash. Actually opting to use Glider's Medallion and duck around the corner. Minpoike's hunting him. He's Feral Affinity. Minpoike can do just as much damage as a Feral Druid with this decision. Decides to stun up Suniki, go for a clone, gets Death Gripped on it, and denies the Cyclone. Suniki, though, has been pressured nonstop, and this is what we thought compositionally would do the work for Change My Mind and maybe picking that Rogue Mage earlier could cost them the series because after this, it's the map pick for we were here. We're going to go to the smallest maps in the pool and then Poike seems going to get run down. So even if Sunaki does meet defeat here shortly, they've got everything left to win the series. Way the crane gets activated. Sunaki gets cloned at low health. Then Poike definitely putting the team in his back pocket in these final moments potentially for Sunaki. Full polymorph secured. Polymorph on the trinket. Sunaki on the run to stay in the fight. They've still got a mana lead at least to their name, but they've burned basically every cooldown. Yeah, although Valet seems to be a, uh, uh, although Valet, you'd think he would be a better target in this matchup, I actually think it's Fried Kitty who's setting up all of the plays. He's getting the Polymorphs on a Gloon. He's being able to basically free cast out Blizzards as well as Ooh. Frost Bolts to build up his damage. I actually think it's better for them to be <laughs> on the Frost Mage in this matchup uh, to sort of prevent these play makes th that Fried Kitty is coming up with. I thought they were going to double Ring of Peaceman Poike in the corner and just take him out while he couldn't escape. That would definitely have been a cheeky play on their part. I do think it's important that they attack the Feral Affinity Druid, but now they're deep into dampening. That's pretty risky to do. You can't really rely on Death Strike now to carry your own life while your healer sits crowd control. So uh, this is risky moves by We Were Here. They're still leading in the series, but so far I think the momentum has been for Change My Mind in this match in particular. Mayline trades out his defensive line to stay in the fight a bit longer, but his healer now gets polymorphed on Way of the Crane. 
Valet getting pressured at the same time. Both teams are going to struggle here at 18% dampening. Yeah, Mayline has to run out of line of sight. Gladiator Safeguard is going to proc on him. Sunakai left in the open. Rhea Frost gets you by Fried Kitty. But the AMS will be enough to deny that anti-magic cell. Very powerful against magic damage. Mayline now looking to get aggressive on a Fried Kitty. But so far, changed my mind there. Just in the driver's seat of this game. And Poike trying to get out of combat. Look for a drink. And if he gets a full mana reset, I feel like this game could potentially just be over. All right, Ring of Peace. Loxman, Poike in the room. But there's just no damage at this point. Momentum entirely in favor of change my mind. As they look to reverse sweep here. But they burned both of their best maps as they take... No, they don't take him down. Galoon keeps him going just a tad bit longer. I Minpoike's mean, moving in. He wants to close this out and put a point on the board. Gallon gets Psychic screamed out of the bash. Crowd control looks good, but now they need the damage to back it up. Valet goes into void form, boosting his damage quite immensely. Perfectly timed counter spell onto Galoon. He doesn't have the mana from Way of the Crane, I don't believe. And Mayline is at critical moments in life here. Mind control now at low health. Ops to use the Gladius Medallion to break out, allow Galoon to start healing him back to full health. But while we take stock of the cooldowns, change my mind, have everything a significant mana lead. And we were here. They're not looking to be here much whoa, whoa, longer. Whoa, whoa, Maybe whoa, whoa. Valet gets bursted. He's able to escape to safety with that Gladiator Safeguard Shield soaking up what could have been the final hits. We were here a definitely a pain train. So even if they are so far behind, one quick hit might close this series for them. Bastion on Sunakai. Do they have the damage? Sunakai still has all his defenses left. Galoon gets polymorphed with his way of the crane. He needs to get a rising sun kick. He needs to get just a little bit more healing for his team, but at 28% Ooh, damage, I don't know what it's going to do. But they caught into the dispersion, and it's possible. We were here. They can push in all in. Mayline, he has the anti magic cell, the anti magic zone. Valet's looking to escape, but Nenpoike might not be able to heal him up through this Windwalker Death Knight damage at 30% dampening. And Poike actually getting swapped to now. Lake Sweep was committed on him, but I really don't think that's going to be doing too much. I think it was a giant waste of that cooldown. Um, and Poike really isn't respecting the damage. Managing to jump to safety. Innervate makes all of his healing free. Galoon snuck away and regenerated a huge mana lead now in his favor. And that was clutch for the team of We Were Here, despite being pressured, despite being so far behind. Kept the presence of mind to try and look for a drink to regenerate mana, which now keeps his team in the fight and really puts the pressure on here. In Poike's tournament, life on the line. This is supposed to be his redemption, but he may just be knocked out as they start to pressure him. Ben Poike jumps across the field, trying to drag both Mainline and Suniki out in open field, but they're not falling for that. It's too threatening. They're all just pinned back behind the pillar. 35% dampening. And Poike too far away. They can't deny him from now drinking and regenerating back to maximum as both teams reset. It's still anyone's match. Definitely at 37% dampening. It could be scary. And maybe that leg sweep wasn't a giant waste as it did allow Galoon to actually get some mana as when Poike was the only one that could swap him. So in hindsight, I didn't think it was a good move, but it absolutely was, and it kept we were here in this game. Play now into the leg sweep. Heat trinkets out. Dispersion now available. Looking for the fear. Thorns gets traded out. Byman Poike as well, trying to slow down Mayline. And Suniki, full polymorph on Galoon, and every time he gets polymorph, it's going to be more and more scary, as it is so hard for him to actually top off his team at 40% dampening. Fortifying Brew gets used by Sunakai. Silence on Sunakai as well. The CC chain just not ending. Revival gets traded out by Galoon. Sunakai has to get some heals. Galoon connects the life cocoon as he gets put into to another poly but it's only 20 percent of his health at 40 percent dampening Sunakai has to run across the entire map and we were here just really struggling to find any sort of pressure they only win this game by targeting in poike there's too many cooldowns left in the game wave the crane and targeting in poike is the only way i see it but they're gonna go after valet he can just so easily disperse laugh in their face and then run them over he's gonna fade that way of the crane immune it now galoon gets polyed and this is definitely a bit of a throwaway i think on the mistweaver's part that way of the crane needs to be set up for the maximum push the final opportunity but they haven't found it now his entire team is starting to flail just to stay alive they're trying to create some pressure they're trying to find an opportunity touch of death about to explode Valet going to take a huge amount of damage trading disperse and not being greedy unlike in game number one he safely escapes that attack now counter pressure mayline stuck in midfield he's trying to steal a polymorph at that dark simulacrum 
Curious to find out if he did. I don't believe that he did, unfortunately. That might have been clutch in winning this match. It looks like Sunakai is going to go after Minpoike. Mayline is going after Valet. He wants to get that anti-magic zone on the target. That's not going to immediately escape its defense. Maledix might be able to close this. Dampening's really high at this point. Healing is increasingly difficult. There's the way of the crane, but it gets crowd controlled. And I'm not sure if he's going to be able to stay alive. Mayline, that's critical mass, ultimately falls and changed my mind. Stay alive. Oh my goodness, they are going to be able to do it. Definitely some close calls there. Place. No, it wouldn't. No, I think you're wrong. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it's not a seven. I know your mind is in the gutter quite often here on Dalaran series, but no, I don't think it would be a, fi a fitting final resting place. In, in fact, it would be quite despicable. The gates are now open. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mayline charging forward. Maybe Fried Kitty is the new target of choice. I think on the smaller map, it's incredibly intelligent. Valet, he's going to be able to get off his damage regardless, whereas Fried Kitty, he's going to struggle to push in, get those polymorphs, use his blinks uh. offensively. Sinekai taking quite a bit of burst very early on. Trades out almost his entire defensive arsenal, uh. but he doesn't care. Looking to get aggressive. On him and Poike actually gets life gripped away. Galoon there for the leg sweep. And Poike has to trink it out into another stun. Yikes. They Yikes. might be able to just run him down, not using the bark skin, but trading out the void shift as well. <laughs> I feel like that was... <laughs> Min Poike didn't respond to that situation very well. If he's playing Feral Affinity, he shouldn't be. Not on Tolerant Sewers. He doesn't have the space to get away with it, and maybe he's not. That might be the only reason he didn't just end up going down there. He hasn't really shown his hand yet against We Were Here, and he might still be playing it. Galoon with a pretty life. Nice grip into double stun. I do like the pressure on Min Poike as Windwalker Death Knight targeting the healer is so important, and Min Poike is disrespecting the amount of damage available, not trading out Barskin. Still holding on to it he is running the guardian affinity an important adaptation on a small map against a death knight windwalker as you are likely to be the target as a healer so that will allow him a safety net with frenzied regeneration to recover good adaptation by min poike i'm glad that he didn't overextend himself picking that feral affinity here his tournament life is on the line that yeah, gloom charging in he's actually hitting the mind bender to make sure he's getting value of that way of the crane not exactly ideal but he does manage to find the healing he needs to top off his team both healers really relatively even on mana at this point. Fried Kitty gets the thorns, so they really can't connect to him or they risk taking a little bit too much damage. And Poike once again just sitting down for a drink. And I really gotta give Minpoike credit in these matchups. I feel like he's doing such a good job making sure his team stays ahead by sitting down for those drinks, making sure his mana is completely topped off. And that gives his team a lot of freedom to continue to play aggressive in these situations. Yeah, it can be fatiguing playing these long extended series and still having to keep your head in the game to see any opportunity you can to regenerate your mana back to full with those recent mana nerfs. Every healer is going to need to look to play as efficiently as possible. We do see Valet and Suniki under fire during this assault. Who's gonna fall first? Suniki able to duck around the corner with his team, and this is the advantage on Dalaran Sewers. They can easily move in and out, hit and run, and it's gonna be small map after small map if Change My Mind can pull off a miracle here on Dalaran Sewers. So Minpoike needs your energy. If you're a Minpoike fan, if you want him to stay in this tournament, you want him to have the redemption story, this is it. Yeah, Valet charges in him. They might just get a free dispersion here, but a triple fear sets up Change My Mind to potentially get more crowd control. Fried Kitty lands the full sheet. Now Sunakai and Mayline, they have to play defensive one night. So once again, but at no dampening, I feel like Mayline, he cannot die to this composition unless he completely throws. So he's going to be able to survive quite easily with that anti-magic shell, push forward, find some damage on Fried Kitty, who trades out the temporal shield very early on. Now, this is an opportunity for Mayline and Sunakai to push forward a little bit more and keep up this pressure, but defensively formed has changed my mind right now as they spam out the polymorphs and mind controls. And Poike trying to sit down for a drink once again, but he really can't afford to. Fried Kitty getting lower. Uh, that's going to be the Gladiator's Maledict to incapacitate on Minpoike. If they can reconnect, Fry Kitty could be forced into his first Ice Block. Yeah, another Maledict, and these Maledicts need to get Ice Blocks. It should be, as we said in the pregame of one of the previous series, three Maledicts gets an Ice Block. Wait, reset. Three Maledicts gets an Ice Block. Wait, reset. Three Maledicts gets the Iron Bark. Move in with Way of the Crane. The added extra damage should be more than enough to put the Frost Mage down. And so far, we were here, have not executed on that strategy nearly effectively enough to close the match out and the longer they waste the more opportunity change my mind will have as Suniki dips low on health Galoon not making the error of using life cocoon on the incorrect target during that mind control now connecting the absorb but now polymorphed good denial of that way of the crane Suniki retreats 
Ring of Peace to stop Minpoike from cycling him and buy, uh, cycloning him and buying himself some space to vivify back to full. Gallon got left behind though. They might actually go after him and force a Gladiator's Medallion if they've got Burst. Doesn't look like it. They're actually going after Mayline. He cannot use Death Strike if no one's next to him. No one is next to him right now. He's gripping Fried Kitty. He can now blink to safety. The Water Elemental needs to move its way out of, out of the way as well, or else it can be Death Strike, but Mayline not going to be going down before dampening here. Mana even on both fronts. We were here have the map advantage, but they are falling behind on important cooldowns. Yeah, and here's one of the matchups where Miss Fever Monks just, I don't think, excel really hard. They're just so susceptible to that Frost Mage crowd control. This is a Restoration Druid. If Galoon had the flexibility to play another healer, it would be such a different matchup for them. But unfortunately, forced on that Miss Weaver Monk, just making Sunakai and Mayline have to play so defensive. Every time he gets Beard, every time he gets Polymorph, they have to run away, try to avoid as much damage as possible. They need to find these moments. Like you said, Sid, maybe the triple Maledic Trinket is what they need to be forcing out those Ice Blocks. But they really have to coordinate coordinate it well with their crowd control on Minpoike if they want to close out this game. I mean, at this point in dampening, it's do or die. If they can't get through some ice blocks soon, Minpoike becomes their only point to attack. And I mean, he could be a target to take out. We saw him almost go down in the first second of the match. Now in dampening, when healing's reduced, maybe 40%, Minpoike doesn't get away with that play. So I would like to see swapped to Minpoike if we were here, can't build momentum onto Fried Kitty. Currently, crowd control in Poike. Fried Kitty gets crowd control onto Galoon. Both healers falling a tad bit behind here in terms of throughput. And Poike now getting interrupted as Mayline ducks for cover. Although he left Suniki behind if they decide to switch their attention to him. And it looks like they are. Maledix connect. That's going to soak up a ton of healing. Diffuse magic removes it. Nice timing there to stay alive. Yeah, Sunakai, nicely done by him, but another Maledic Trinket onto Sunakai. He's in a lot of trouble. Life Cocoon connect from Galoon, but he might have to trade out the Touch of Karma as well. They need to get an Ice Block here. They traded out so many defensive cooldowns at the expense of what? If they don't get anything here from Change My Mind, this is going to be a disaster for a We Were Here. Broad Kitty blinks away. Minpoike trying to keep him alive. Where the crane gets polymorphed once again. Mayline and Sunakai there on Fried Kitty. Temporal Shield might activate and does. He manages to survive and hold the ice block for now. And this is looking like a disaster for We Were Here. Yeah, things are starting to slowly fall apart as Filet and Fried Kitty get their act together. Minpoike keeps it solid in the back line on the healer, constantly regenerating that mana for the late game potential of his team. Ice block traded for a drink. Not really the best case scenario, especially if Maledix is available. They might actually be able to kill Fried Kitty during hypothermia. I think that's an opportunity they should look to take advantage of. It could catch them off guard, but they've only got a couple more seconds before Fried Kitty will be able to ice block again. And they can't stay aggressive. They opted to just pull out, maybe look to set up for a Maledict push uh, later on and this would be good timing to get that second ice block right before dampening hits critical mass and just kill fried kitty through iron bark in deep dampening that is likely the best win condition for we were here but now with galoon crowd controlled mayline is going to pull back Valet actually pushes forward, securing crowd control on the entire team. And in dampening, Death Strike is a lot less effective. Any magic shield soaks up this hit while Galen sits through crowd control. Suniki actually using Diffuse Magic a bit aggressively there, but getting mind controlled ends up being interrupted. Minpoike locked in crowd control, double leg sweep. Timing looks good. This is where the Maledicts come in to force the second ice block. They have to time the one after another, and they get void oh! shift and ice block. Critical errors by Change My Mind. Massive miscommunication. Their tournament lives are on the line, and they're throwing this away. They used it every Everything. There was no Iron Bark. There was no Ice Block. No Cold Snap. No Void Shift. Fried Kitty all alone. Can they close out this game as they push forward? Finally, Minpoike finding the heals that he needs onto Fried Kitty to stabilize him. But still, Sunakai trades out the Karma into the Thorns. He doesn't care. He wants to continue this pressure. Temporal Shield might be able to keep Fried Kitty alive at Prox, but that's the last line of defense. And Poike actually has the Iron Bar coming off cooldown. Needs to trade that out as well. But after that's over, we were here. They need to push and try to close out this game as soon as possible. Now, Sunaki is going to duck for cover while Galoon sits through crowd control. Mayline gets swapped to. He swaps out for the anti magic shield. So Soaking up huge hits, but one more push with Way of the Crane. As soon as those Maledict Trinkets come off cooldown, Fried Kitty is curtains. There is no way for him to survive. Galoon has all of the resources to make it to that point. So it's all about execution and setup. If they create that situation, they will create victory for themselves. They will deny the redemption story of Minpoike, sending them back to the drawing board for next week. We were here are the giant killers in this tournament. Knocked out of the lower bracket, but down there they are going to wreak havoc. 
havoc across the lower bracket. Let's see if they can do it. They need just one setup. Way of the Crane is available. They've got every single answer to take Fried Kitty down. All they have to do is execute. Paralysis on Minpoike. Stun up Fried Kitty. Push forward and close it. Galoon now on Polymorph DR. Opens up a huge opportunity. Maylines makes an efficient trade. Icebound Fortitude. Duck for cover. Wait for Galoon to get out of crowd control. Pop that Way of the Crane and go for the kill. Yeah, Sunakai still charging forward. Mayline forced to trade out the anti-magic zone. Minpoike with the game-winning Cyclones potentially onto Galoon, onto Mayline. Go for Sunakai. it! Sunakai with the touch of Karma. Here it is, Way of the Crane. Fried Kitty, he needs to escape. I think he used both of his blinks there, so he's just going to be a sitting duck as they tear into him. Minpoike has to keep him alive with the Iron Bark. Nice fear from Belay into a mind control, doing everything he can to get Mayline off Go of for him. It. But it might be too much damage for them to handle. Still big heals connecting from Minpoike, throwing out the Thorns. And now Sunakai, Galoon, and Mayline, they have to make a choice. Do we continue to push forward, attacking into the Thorns? I think the answer is yes. They need to push him over. Ice block available in a minute and a half, but things are falling apart for we were here. Preemptive Fortified Brew. I'd love to see a trinket from Galoon on this Cyclone. Trinket Life Cocoon and kill. There's the Trinket Life Cocoon. Now where's the kill? They got denied. Valet carry during that last attack. Life gripping Fried Kitty to safety. Psychic screaming the reconnect. Doing everything in his capabilities to keep his team alive during that critical moment. And Poike sneaks away. Gets a little bit of mana maybe into the tank here for a kill later on. But that Maledict Trinket is now available. That attack with three Maledicts? No way you're getting out alive, Fried Kitty. And they don't have enough mana though for Way of the Crane. Maybe there's an opportunity in deep dampening. There's not much in the defensive lineup. It's do or die at this point for We Were Here. They could just knock him out of the tournament. They need to time these Maledicts perfectly. Galoon gets silenced. He can't support. Suniki gets polymorphed. Galoon rolls in to try and dispel and gets crowd control intercepted by the opposing team. Psychic Scream to follow up. Perfect lockdown onto Galoon in a bit of a throwaway by We Were Here as they may inevitably go down. Is there too much dampening and deep dampening? That Death Strike is just not doing too much as they trade Life Cocoon. Way of the Crane. It's do or die fried kitty what do you have they need the maledicts they have to coordinate them where are they i don't know but that was a beautiful mind control from valet to deny mayline any sort of damage full polymorph on galoon now fried kitty like you said it's a race to the finish sid he's got 15 seconds left on the ice block anti-magic zone still available can they take him down in these eight seconds if they don't change my mind they have so many cooldowns rotating up void shifts up in one minute iron bark in 20 seconds ice block is now available and it's not looking good for we were here they need to push forward and get this ice block if they want to continue in this series he's got two ice blocks they lost they just used a maledict into that ice block lack of execution they couldn't cross crowd control they didn't deny valet support mistakes were made by we were here has changed my mind's massive mistake has now been recalculated and accounted for and they should look to close galoon just has no mana left they're down a maledict main line is his line of sighting but he's not going to get healed for some time and poik is just laughing drinking maybe doesn't even need to drink uh, they're just going to keep doing damage and main line's going to fall over dampening's too high and change my mind stay in the tournament bringing this to a game five and it will definitely be decided in everything but we were here gonna try to stop that they have the eyes of a demon will they be able to close this one out and take it away ladies and gentlemen game five the last game of the day you don't want to go anywhere as Minpoike tries to keep the redemption story going for himself with his new teammates valet fried kitty and acro on the bench in the meantime we were here make a mix up here bringing in the demon hunter trying to surprise their opponents there is no room for error everything on the line metamorphosis gets used mainline looking to get hyper aggressive here on fried kitty sunakai and mainline some of the most mobile melee in the game fried kitty's gonna have a very difficult time actually kiting these two classes iron bark and thorns used by minpoike before he goes into the leg sweep galoon looking to push in and get some crowd control now running away out of line of sight keeping his team nice and aggressive it's gonna be up to fried kitty to consistently kite away from galoon force him off the pillar so he can find these polymorph setups a little bit later on especially if the lake uh, can set him up with a psychic horror fried kitty is just taking unhealable 
damage early on here by We Are Here. And Poiki actually made a mistake and used Solar Wrath and broke a Polymorph, I think Fried Kitty was trying to use to create space. So definitely need to be communicating there to not break these Polymorphs. As a Frost Mage, it's already kind of annoying to have melee on top of you, but these melee classes in particular are not going anywhere anytime soon. They move so fast and so rapidly. Fried Kitty is just going to have both of these guys in his face the entire fight, and I'm not sure how many times he's going to be able to deal with it. Galoon comfortably just sat through a lot of crowd control, his entire team unfazed. I think that this swap to Demon Hunter could be the reason why we were here. Stay alive in the tournament and take the redemption away from Minpoike. Yeah, well, Minpoike already sat down looking for a drink. He got shot down by a nice ring of peace from Galoon. He can use that ring of peace from range if he sees where Minpoike went in stealth and easily shut down those drinks by keeping him in combat. And I think that's going to be key to this game. Minpoike has been very sneaky all throughout the day, trying to find those drinks whenever he can. Here's another opportunity. Can they shut it down? Because if Minpoike can sit down and get these drinks consistently, it's going to be really difficult for We Were Here to close out the game. All right, that ring of peace locks Minpoike in his room. He's in timeout as he gets denied on his drink and the regeneration of his mana. Fried Kitty getting bursted. Minpoike tries to deflect. Will it be enough? There's just a ton of damage. And we can obviously see that Mini Line is having a way better time on Demon Hunter than on that Death Knight, able to connect almost 100% of the time. Getting Psychic Screamed away for a second as it's a three on one. Suniki is going to play defensive. Minpoike moves across to try and continue the chain, but gets intercepted and denied. Suniki will restabilize. This is the perfect map. We were here, have the perfect opportunity to stay alive in the tournament. Change my mind, have to play out of their minds to pull this off if you're just tuning in and poike faces elimination and he's against the wall yeah fried kitty's been doing a really good job you can actually deny a lot of the mobility from a windwalker monk's rolls and a demon hunter's dash uh, if you use your ice nova or your pet nova so it's really high level mage play so when you see those mobility spells you just now nova keep them locked in place and that really denies their future mobility so excellently done by fried kitty implementing that as a strategy in these games to stay alive as long as possible it's going to be one gladiator's maldict on fried kitty two as he trinkets out looking to just run and hide as long as possible really limiting the uptime of mayline and sunika galoon actually opted to drop way of the crane when he's playing with a demon hunter who can get him out of crowd control on the smallest map where it would be most advantageous to have it. That's Galoon saying that he doesn't trust himself aggressively and wants to go for a later game kill. Now, that might actually be more favorable for the team of Change My Mind, and Galoon might be throwing this series away by being overly cautious on that decision. It's not a one that he's going to be able to take back. Yeah, but he's sitting at 100% mana and hasn't had to sit for any drinks just yet. The Way of the Crane is a very expensive spell, so Galoon maybe, uh, as this roll on the Mistweaver Monk, he's opting to just put Minpoike into as much crowd control as possible and taking on the responsibility of shutting down those drinks. Also, Galoon, he's been getting destroyed, like you said, anytime he weighs the crane, he's immediately feared. He's polymorphed three times into a Cyclone and really just not having that much fun as the Mistweaver Monk, especially against a high-level player like Fry Kitty, was able to just control him up. They're not picking their moments well enough, so I think the adaptation is good. Ooh. Fried Kitty getting bursted down as he's caught into a leg sweep, into a Chaos Nova. Then Poike doesn't really have much to keep him alive. No Iron Bark available. Fried Kitty still just trying to kite around. Power Shield comes in from Belay, keeping Fried Kitty alive a little bit longer. Safeguard does Brock. That's one Maledic Trinket coming in from We Were Here as they're looking to get the first Ice Block, but still just damage not there to force it I mean, and dampening a push like that is easily an ice block or a kill so if galoon can maintain his man out late and have some defensive cooldowns in their arsenal to trade for a push like that we were here can close the game out quite easily with just raw pressure and all three members chasing down fried kitty dampening now just engaged no significant mana advantage on either side although on this map I mean, Poike will have a difficult time getting drinks because it's so small the demon hunter can close the gap and put him back into combat almost immediately fried kitty trying to get space the maledicts are really uncoordinated here by we were here just trading them out and getting dispelled one by one by minpoike i really think that they could coordinate them a lot better and it's very important for against the restoration druid to deny his heal over time effects and force powerful defensive cooldowns
rebounds like ice block we were here are making mistakes change my mind look to stay alive in the tournament now forcing that precious defensive cooldown touch of karma crushing through it as well suniki hiding behind that wall then poike running away he knows he needs to take this time to try and get a drink but may land on that demon hunter immediately denies yeah galuni actually opted to drop the way the crane for the zen focus t that gives him an opportunity when that full down is available the thunder focus t for him to actually get some uninterrupted casts off to keep his team alive and i think it's smart because he was having so many problems actually topping off his team outside of crowd control now with how much throughput the misweaver monk has when he does have that free or that freedom to cast he can top someone off quite quickly when he does get out of the polymorphs Yep, yeah, definitely, as the game has stalled out, both teams a bit reluctant to push forward as it looks like dampening is a requirement for both teams' strategies. They're playing perfectly in terms of positioning and cooldown management, so neither side is finding any openings. The Maledicts are too uncoordinated, I do believe, on the side of We Were Here, and I feel like they're throwing away their advantage. They had the 2-0 lead. They had the map picks for the two last rounds and changed my mind, looked to stay alive in the tournament. Crowd control looks good. Soon Key is forced to roll away and hide. The lay can't get in line of sight. Fried Kitty tries to go for it, gets denied by Mayline. Consistent backup on his part. The one advantage that the Demon Hunter brings late in dampening is that when they go all in for a push and two members on opposing teams are low, Darkness can just deny the kill entirely. And in that safety net, they can push forward while they are immune to death. I do think that the Demon Hunter pick is the right decision by We Were Here, but they need better execution. I and mean, Poike hasn't been able to drink during this game. Game. Earlier on, he got about 10% mana back, but after that, Galoon's been doing a really good job stopping him, and they can keep doing this. You see, Galoon is way ahead on mana. We're moving towards 20% dampening. Fried Kitty, Thorns, Temporal Shield was used. Like I said, it's really important. Once they get the Temporal Shield, once they get the Iron Bark, which they just got, this is when they have to make their offensive push, go forward, try to take Fried Kitty down, and just try to get out some unhealable damage. Maylined in trouble. Darkness traded out. He's dangerously low here. Mind control in low health. Life Cocoon will start to stabilize him. Maylined may be a vulnerability here deeper into dampening. That was definitely caught off guard by Change My Mind. Throwing out a ton of damage and forcing most offensive cooldowns in the lineup of We Were Here. And slowly but surely, Minpoike keeping his tournament dreams alive. Yeah, Minpoike sitting down for a drink. Does it get shut down? Yes, it does. Galoon is there. And like I said, Minpoike's mana is not doing too hot. If they can keep up this pressure on Fried Kitty, although this is scary for Mayline and Sunakai, <laughs> Minpoike eventually just will run out of mana and not be able to top off his team. Okay, we're going to have to decide. Is it Sunaki or Sunakai? Sunakai. Okay, I guess we're going with Sunakai. Fried Kitty has Icy Veins activated. His damage is going to be boosted. Who is he going after? It needs to be Mayline. They don't get the damage. Fried Kitty gets denied as he's imprisoned by Mayline. And now finally able to start to stabilize. And Poike sneaks away. This is Mayline's responsibility, but he can't stop it. Mind control by Valet. Ring of Peace does manage to come in and at least prevent a complete reset. Now a tied ball game in terms of mana at 25% dampening. Cooldown wise, changed my mind in the lead, but this may be an ice block on the double stun push. Finally, good execution by We Were Here. Good coordination. Nets them an ice block. Yep, at least punishing Mimpoike a little bit for sitting down for that drink as Fried Kitty did have to trade out an ice block, but he has the cold snap. He uses the cold snap, and second ice block will be available. I want to see him do that as soon as possible so cold snap's timer can start ticking down. He did manage to find it, and Mimpoike complete reset on his mana and defensive cooldowns. This is still looking really good for Change My Mind. Valet still has the Void Shift as well. Touch of Death now used by Sunakai as they look to close out the game during Hypothermia. Iron Bark should deny this kill. Ring of Peace does get used, but unfortunately botched there, and Fried Kitty was able to escape, not knocked back into his opponents. This is game five between these teams that face elimination and dampening in this critical mass. This game will be ended, and it's looking to be more and more in favor of Change My Mind. We were here, had all of the advantages, and they just threw it away with improper execution. They're going to have to just do it with raw pressure. Do they have it? Are they going to get it? They get it. They keep themselves in the game. Second Ice Block Force switching some attention to Valet now as well, spreading their arsenal to multiple targets to try and catch Minpoike off guard, but now Galoon's crowd controlled. Mayline has to retreat and duck for cover. He does not want to be sent home here at 33 
15% dampening. His healer still crowd controlled. They switch their attention to Sunika as well. Still crowd controlled up by Minpoike. You can tell that Minpoike wants it so badly to stay in this tournament and advance to the lower bracket for an opportunity to show that he's still got it. But we were here pulling themselves back into the fight. Fried Kitty with no ice blocks. One big push with three Maledicts. Should be more than enough. All they have to do is execute. Yeah, Mayline still has his darkness as well. Galoon, Trinket, and Life Cocoon. Fried Kitty in a lot of trouble. Still has his Temporal Shield and Iron Bark. Once they get through those cooldowns, that's when we want to see the offensive push. Till then, it's just about doing consistent damage. They need to find some setups. Galoon throwing out the Life Cocoon to keep Sunakai aggressive. But Sunakai, he has no defensives left. Still, 15 seconds left on that touch of karma. That's going to make him very confident to push in and actually try to take Fried Kitty down. He has a free touch of karma, as we say. Fried Kitty's not going to be able to ice block that off. And oh. They can continue this pressure. There's one. Fried Kitty getting a little bit low. Minpoike caught into the imprisonment. He finds the iron bark. Galoon caught into the polymorph, but he still has his trinket. Like, Galoon is doing so well in terms of defenses. He's still able to keep this team alive, keep him aggressive. Mana's looking good. Fried Kitty has the icy veins. They need to find an opportunity. Sunakai finds the touch of death. Once again, a maledict on to Fried Kitty. He gets it spelled off in Poike, but you can see Sunakai basically going on a solo mission as Mayline is nowhere to be found. Mayline charges forward. They've got Blur. They've got everything, and suddenly we were here putting themselves back into the tournament. There's too much damage. Void Shift. Valet redirects the damage to himself, taking the hit for his team, but Minpoike's low on mana, and suddenly, changed my mind, might not actually have this game in the bag. There's no defense, really, for them to stay in it. Whereas the side of We Were Here still have Life Cocoon and Galoon's Glider's Medallion. This is where the Way of the Crane pick comes in. If Galoon had Way of the Crane, he could get aggressive, add damage to his team, and be the X Factor in finding the kill, but he went for the safer route. Now with that lack of damage, maybe his team doesn't have enough to put him over the edge. Maybe they do. Fried Kitty, this is it. Minpoike faces elimination. There just might be too much damage. Iron Bark at 46% dampening. He gets life gripped. Valet once again carrying and de-dampening to keep him alive, but Metamorphosis is too much to handle, and Minpoike is sent home. We were here despite mistakes. Stay in the tournament. 3-2. to two. Nico already did mention we are going to see in the lower portion of the bracket some interesting stuff happened we were here going up against group therapy again and method black and wildcard gaming being two of the most dominant forces in the eu they still have not lost a series yet we're going to see 